Hey, is this thing on? What's up? What's up? I know, I know, it's been a while. Hello to you XJW tubers, uh, potential investigating Jehovah's Witnesses, lurking Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, those interested in exiting cults and high control groups of that sort. All of you good folks, hope you are well. Hope you are well. True Survives 411. Wanted to check in and talk about this, uh, what I consider to be this gift that the XJW community and frankly Jehovah's Witnesses, whether they acknowledge it or not, have gotten this gift they've gotten in the last year or so from one Leah Ramini and her uh, compatriot Mike Render and all those involved in the show uh, Scientology in the Aftermath. This A&E series, if you have not, if you have not watched it, you absolutely must, is all I can say on that. You absolutely must watch it. Um, here's what I'm going to say to you. In my mind, JWs, the organization and those within it and the leadership, they're getting a full waft of secondhand smoke and a contact high from this series. Even though the series is about Scientology, in the course of me watching it uh, over these last two seasons, I must say to you, it's basically like looking into a very old and yet familiar mirror that is really showing me things that I didn't even think existed anywhere else, at least not to that degree, um, when it comes to the past life that many of us had as Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, this series is showing that other groups that have been hurt by extremist culture under the guise of religion is something that essentially I think uh, their time is just about up. And even when it comes to the JW.org organization, it's without a question. The, the jig is up on that thing. The jig is up. It just boils down to how people are going to process the ultimate downfall of that organization as a religion of any type of substance. Um, but some things in going through the series that for me uh, leads to me characterizing it as a contact high or essentially a, a bunch of secondhand smoke is, for example, the lingo. If you watched any number of episodes, you heard expressions like good standing. Leah was interviewing people and they said that I was a Scientologist in good standing. Does that sound familiar? Well, if you've spent any time in JW land, you absolutely know that that expression, uh, good standing, sounds very familiar. And yet we processed and we said and we regurgitated that shit and we're like, wow, good standing. As if we were in a position to determine someone's standing uh, in our community of uh, supposed, you know, individuals blessed or isolated by God, but good standing. That's an expression that they use. Really interesting. And why? Because them Scientologists, just like other groups that want to control people, they essentially are all about trying to maintain and dominate relationships. Because ultimately, if they can maintain and dominate relationships and how they go, then ultimately, what can they do? They can control you. They can control you. And that's a tactic of these types of extremist cults. And it was just, it's, it's very simple. I know it's not something that's a, people would consider to be some type of a hidden or elevated point, but it's still very powerful. The idea of maintaining and controlling relationships is a very powerful tool in these types of extremist fringe groups. And that's something that we can't really, you know, forget about um, this whole idea of discipline. There's a discipline mindset. There's these things that they do for you if you're out of order as a Sea Org member or if you were a person that was moving up the chain of all these stupid levels that they have. There's always this idea of discipline and control and uh, 
uh, orders that are given that dictate what your next move is or isn't to be. And something that, you know, was not to be questioned if it was deemed to have come from on high. Uh, a discipline mindset, another contact high, if you ask me, when it comes to Scientology and Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, this whole thing about limiting your outside exposure to the real world. Uh, de-emphasizing again this thing about education and how important it should be in your life. They don't want you in Scientology to build anything of substance outside of the religion because ultimately what will that mean? Well that'll allow for you to challenge and or move on from it because you have something else. Whereas if you are one of those that didn't take that opportunity it many times can slow down or stop a person from moving forward in their lives, even though they know that's what they need to do. And in Jehovah's Witnesses organization, exact damn same thing. They de-emphasize and poo-poo education, unless, as they say, it's the highest education or divine education from their perspective, uh, which many times doesn't really serve you as well in the real world. But they de-emphasize those things because they want you to be dependent upon them. And that's something, of course, that, you know, you see in, in many of the interviews of people that were in Scientology. Why is that? Because they damn want to control you. They want to take away your incentive, your spirit and your motivation to get the hell out, especially when you come to the realization that you should. Um, from my perspective, comparing the two Jehovah's Witnesses and Scientology, Jehovah's Witnesses is probably like the less extreme little brother of Scientology, not when it comes to size, scope, and or uh, uh, certainly the amount of time that they've been in existence. I, I understand Jehovah's Witnesses as an organization have a longer record than does uh, Scientology. But in terms of just comparing the two, and their practices, I would say that Jehovah's Witnesses is a less extreme form, but nevertheless, very much a harmful uh, little brother. So one that still can do damage for sure. Um, this is the worst thing for JWs to have this series on Scientology out. And I know people may be like, what do you mean? How, how so? The fact of the matter is, even though I hear in the grapevine, it's possible uh, JWs will be the target in the future of people like Aaliyah Ramini. That's not even as necessary as many of us might believe it is. I think there's still a lot of value in it and it would be great if that's what happens, but that's not nearly as necessary as you might imagine if a person that's a JW or an interested in Jehovah's Witnesses actually watches the Scientology series. Because if they have any a connection to or understanding of JW life and practice, they will be looking in the mirror if they're going to be intellectually and even emotionally honest with themselves. So from that perspective, I think she's done a huge service to Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, questioning Jehovah's Witnesses, former Jehovah's Witnesses, and people that might be interested in the religion just by virtue of doing this series. Um, they mention in a few of the episodes how Scientology takes away uh, your empathy, your ability to feel for others. Now, of course, maybe not so much within Scientology, but for those that are on the outside, especially those that have left, lack of empathy. Sound familiar? If you've been anyone connected to Jehovah's Witnesses, you know exactly what I mean by that. They love to talk about love in John 13, 35, within the construct of the congregation or the organization. But when it comes to those on the outside, where does that empathy really land? Especially for someone that was on the other side of the fence with them and left. So it shows you that again, Jehovah's Witnesses are not as unique. They're not as unique as they claim to be in their thinking and practices in terms of how they operate. And Scientology showed that uh, in spades. Um, and I thought about this in the course of watching it, you know, assuming, and this is an assumption, a, a gift assumption, you might say, assuming that I grant the early JW leadership, uh, the idea that the goal for them 
was essentially well-meaning, having an organization to represent God and to essentially provide people with this wonderful hope for the future based on information they felt that they were uh, provided and, and spirit directed and getting, assuming that I grant them that that was initially the goal. Time and opportunity and the decisions that they've made have shown that their motives at some point in time changed and changed severely to the point that people like Ray France in his publication, uh, Crisis of Conscience, he showed that essentially these people faded away from having faith in supposedly Jehovah God's arrangement and his ability to essentially care for his people. And it got to a point where now this is a business and these are men that are ready to just go about the business of controlling and dominating a flock of people for their own purposes. That, that's where it devolved into. And you could say the same thing is what you see in organizations like Scientology. They may have at some point with this LRH guy, L. Ron Hubbard, had an intention and a motivation that may have on some level sounded or appeared to be genuine and beneficial, maybe altruistic. But as time went on, what really it was about began to show through and show through in spades. And that's exactly what's happened with Jehovah's Witnesses as a modern religious organization. Um, they got to an answer for that. The leadership, those supporting the leadership in very direct and indirect ways, they got to an answer for that because the jig is up on this facade of trying to act as if you're representing anyone other than this religious organization. You know, to say that you got a direct line to, you know, the high priest or what have you is 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 bull right now. And people see through that. Um, this whole running theme throughout the series about Scientology and what it does to families. You heard any number of conversation or comments from people that said, I had to you know, go about this or that particular move in terms of how I dealt with someone in my family or whatever that left in a way that was maybe covert or a little bit, uh, you might say just low key because what? They didn't want to lose their family. Sound familiar? You know, it was again an organization that essentially has a, a, a line of fear running through it because again, this organization is about maintaining and controlling and establishing relationships. And these are people many times that are children or parents or whatever of these individuals. And they have this situation where they have to worry about what's going to happen to this relationship if I do or don't do a certain thing or take a certain action as it relates to someone that leaves or is questioning or is about to leave. Sound familiar? Jehovah's Witnesses are getting a contact high, secondhand smoke, just a billow of it flowing into their kingdom halls with this shit. They are getting it. And it's something that is not going to go away. It's not going to change. They're going to have to accept that this is where we're at. And that's something that is, is going to lead to what's already occurring. This, this drip, 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 this flow, this wave of people that are just leaving, that are just leaving. And we're going to essentially have to, as XJWs, determine how we can best be there and support and help these individuals that are really going to have to come to terms with what's went on, what's really happened. And I can imagine for them, because I'm, I'm out now, what, four plus years, and I'm still flabbergasted by what I'm seeing in this Scientology series. Imagine JWs that are in there right now. Some of them that have watched it, I'm sure they're probably shaking, shaking in their freaking boots because they're watching a horror movie and it's their life. That's the main plot. Their life is the main plot. They're the center stage uh, key actor, actress in this scenario. And it's a nightmare because they have to now come to grips with the fact that they were lied to. 
They were lied to. And as Malcolm said, hoodwinked, led astray, run amok, bamboozled. We have to come to grips with the fact that that's what happened. Scientology, Jehovah's Witnesses, contact high, secondhand smoke. Got to deal with it. Um, this idea that Scientology, one of the mothers that eventually woke up, said that she was of the belief that Scientology was the only way to save mankind. The only way to save mankind, the only hope for the world. Sound familiar? I'm sure it does. That's what JWs have been playing as their ace of spade, as their big joker for decades right now. That they're the only hope. It's the kingdom. It's nothing else. We are the only ones. We got the truth. But yet we don't want you to scrutinize the truth. We don't want any 411 about the truth, i.e. truth survives 411. They don't want any 411. They don't want any scrutiny. But they are about that truth being the thing. And yet, not the only group, guys. Not the only group that claim to have the only hope and know how mankind's future is going to work out. Contact high. Secondhand smoke. Jehovah's Witnesses cannot shake it and... The jig is up, guys. The jig is up. As I said over a year, year plus ago, XJWs, you're winning. You're winning. High fives. You're winning. You're winning, guys. Look around. You are winning. Get your life. Get your life. Because that thing mm -mm, is... If they sold it for what it was, that would be different. Then you make a decision. But they've been selling it for something it's not. And we all got to come to grips with it. Now, there's a lot of my folks that I still care about and love that are in there. And I understand what's happening. They're making what's called a theocratic business decision. And I'll talk more about that later in another video. But they're making a theocratic business decision. But don't get it twisted. There's a lot of dead wood in there. There's a lot of dead wood. And what I mean by that is there are people inside that know what's up. They know the jig is up. They just got to decide how they're going to make their next move, how it's going to play out. And so they're just biding their time. But those folks, they're going to come through as well. Their wave is going to come through. And we have to be ready, like I said, to kind of receive those folks and and try to help them build a life out here. But the bottom line is Scientology, that series, thank Leah Ramini, thank Mike Render, a and &E, and all those people that shared their stories. That is contact high, that's secondhand smoke, that's dope. That is dope for Jehovah's Witnesses in these kingdom halls, these regional assemblies, that's contact high, that's secondhand smoke, that's dope, and there's nothing they can do about it. So on that, we already know. The Scientology series documentary is a win, not just for that small little cult group, but this one we're talking about right now, JW.org, and no doubt others. But it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So I wanted to share that jump back in and say what's up and looking forward to talking with you guys a little bit more but if you agree you disagree you got other feelings about it hit me up let me know in the comments we'll talk to you soon true survives 411